Item number SCP-6097 Object Class Neutralized Special Containment Procedures After more than a century of study, SCP-6097 skeleton is currently on display at Site 34's Biological Anomalous Wing. All remaining documents found to contain information concerning the nature of SCP-1697 and the circumstances of its death are to be confiscated by Mobile Task Force Tau-9 bookworms, with Class A amnestics administered to all witnesses. Efforts to locate the severed head of SCP-1697 are ongoing. Description SCP-1697 was an anomalous entity of unknown origin, which was active in North America for a brief period during the early 19th century. As SCP-1697 predates the modern Foundation's existence, knowledge of its appearance, behavior, and the circumstances of its death are derived primarily from eyewitness testimony and surviving historical records. SCP-1697 was physically reminiscent of an elderly human female. Its most distinctive feature was a long tail attached at the base of the spine, described by witnesses as physically similar to that of a Radius Novicus common rat, which measured approximately 8 meters in length and ending with an eyeball roughly 3 centimeters in diameter at its tip. SCP-1697 possessed what resembled a large wooden spoon, SCP-1697-1, 3 meters in diameter. Whilst SCP-1697 was set atop SCP-1697-1 handle, the object was maneuverable and is reported to have been capable of flying at speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour. Archaeological evidence suggests that SCP-1697 resided in a small isolated cottage located in the Beep Forest, 15 kilometers outside the former city of Brownsville, Massachusetts, where the partially consumed remains of multiple non-anomalous human infants were recovered. Over a period spanning between 1808 and 1810, during nights with a new moon, First phase of the lunar cycle, during which the lunar disk is not visible. SCP-1697 used SCP-1697-1 to travel to the city of Brownsville and surrounding communities, typically during the early hours of the morning. SCP-1697 would then land on the rooftops of civilian homes before extending its tail down the house chimney. Should its tail sight a human child below the age of 18 months, SCP-1697 would proceed to wrap its tail around the child's mouth and nose, causing it to suffocate, before placing the infant's remains in the bowl of SCP-1697-1. As a result of both the limited scope and funding of the American Secure Containment Initiative, ASCI, Foundation Precursor Organization, which operated in North America between 1805 and 1919, and the city of Brownsville's relative isolation, the ASCI did not become aware of SCP-1697 until shortly after its execution. SCP-1697 first attracted the attention of civilian law enforcement in September 1809, following a series of infant abductions across Lear County, with multiple witnesses claiming to have seen a beam matching SCP-1697's description lying on a large spoon and landing on local rooftops. Capture A civilian law enforcement was not equipped to handle the threat posed by SCP-1697. Mass hysteria is reported to have been broken out in a number of communities. It is noted that a number of families with small children began constructing crude makeshift doors from cloth and straw, which were typically placed in a small cradle next to the fireplace. In an effort to confuse SCP-1697, in November of 1810, SCP-1697 was apprehended by James Walker, a local carpenter 
who awoke during the early morning to find the creature's tail slowly wrapping itself around the door sewn by his wife. Walker then proceeded to seize SCP-1697 by the tail, and after a brief struggle, succeeded in nailing it to his home's wooden floorboards, preventing it from escaping, and causing it to shriek in a manner Mr. Walker likened to that of a rat. Walker's brother Samuel alerted the authorities, and shortly thereafter, three members of Brownsville law enforcement, led by Sheriff Alfred T. Hobart, successfully retrieved SCP-1697 from Walker's roof. Sheriff Hobart noted the base of the entity's tail displayed evidence of bite marks, suggesting SCP-1697 may have unsuccessfully attempted to bite off the appendage in an effort to free itself. SCP-1697 was transported to a local jailhouse where it was held for two days, while SCP-1697-1 was confiscated and later incinerated. During this period, Brown's civilians were permitted to view SCP-1697 from behind bars for a fee of 25 cents. It was subsequently sentenced to death on charges of witchcraft, kidnapping, and infanticide. Neutralization. Multiple attempts were made to terminate SCP-1697. The entity was first bound and thrown into nearby Blair's Lake. Reportedly, this resulted in the temperature of the water therein rising drastically, reaching boiling point within a matter of minutes. While SCP-1697 showed some discomfort, it remained largely unharmed, aside from some minor scalding and was swiftly retrieved through use of a fishing net. The first execution attempt having failed, SCP-1697 was then tied to a wooden stake, which was set alight. The resulting flames were described by witnesses as possessing an unearthly hue, glowing in shades of color they were unable to identify, which induced migraines, nausea, and vomiting in onlookers. After 30 minutes, these flames were extinguished with some difficulty. While SCP-1697 showed signs of severe distress, now exhibited both degree burns over much of its body, it nonetheless survived this attempt. SCP-1697 was ultimately decapitated using an iron axe. While SCP-1697 severed head is reported to have remained conscious and vocal, its body began to decompose at an anomalously rapid rate. The entity's bones were then placed in an unused well, some 12 kilometers outside the town's border, which was filled with earth and sealed using a large limestone slab. As there was no known means of destroying SCP-1697's head, it was instead sealed in a wooden crate and buried in an unknown location. Aftermath The American Secure Containment Initiative learned of the Brownsville incident some days later, confiscating all newspapers, journals, and court records containing information pertaining to SCP-1697. SCP-1697's bones were recovered and transported to ASCI Facility Omega, now Site-34, for further study, as far, all attempts to retrieve SCP-1697 severed head have been unsuccessful and its current status remains uncertain. Due to the widespread nature of SCP-1697, the Brownsville incident, the Brownsville incident led to the unprecedented expansion of ASCI and a substantial increase in federal funding. Despite all efforts to contain knowledge of SCP-1697, the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics has found that legends and hypocritical accounts of a figure known as Granny Rattail and the events in Brownsville have persisted to the present day. Addendum between 1811 and 1813, an abnormally high number of miscarriages and stillbirths occurred in Brownsville, and over 70 residents reported to die in childbirth. Local physician and ASCI associate Dr. Jeffrey Knowles documented over a dozen stillborn infants possessing one or more anomalous defects, 
among the most common being the lack of a head and possession of a long tail like appendage. Around the same time, the brown rat population of Lear County increased significantly, with new specimens found to grow up to twice their typical size and behave in an unusually aggressive manner. This in turn resulted in a number of virulent outbreaks such as Listeria and Salmonella in several communities. Following multiple periods of unseasonal drought and crop failure, the city of Brownsville was ultimately abandoned in 1814. No further anomalous activity has occurred since.